Okay slash x slash let's get this over with. I have been debating whether to tell this story for a while now. I speaks English with an apology, as it is not my first language. I live in a country called Georgia. After school is over one summer, I and several of my friends decided to go out of town a bit in a bit of adventure travel. The weather is beautiful and can be a very hot summer in Georgia, so I and my friends, seven them all together, were enjoying long walks. The first few days, it was so much fun, shrink, and smoke, and we were laughing and everybody's having fun. However, we have a friend called Alex, and we were going with that little crazy man. Not a bad man, but he is not afraid of anything. One night, we were camping in the forest clearing. It's getting dark so we will all go and get some more firewood and I and my friend Locab, a knife and go to cut the sticks. We are there because we have been drinking for a while and we get a bit lost. I and my friend are very frightened and hear rustling in the woods. This is a very dark, to find out what it is exactly, but it was coming closer. I call out and out comes running out screaming Alexei, trying to scare us. We laugh it off and say, yes, I was so scared I almost cut him. He said that our friends have not seen us for a while and came to find us because they are a little worried about us. As he speaks, the smell hits me like a punch in the face. I almost vomiting and ask him why he smells so bad. He tells me that on the way back, he wants to show us something. So, we walked back and I am still confused why it smells so bad. About a 10 minute walk, we arrive at what looks like a former bunker. Again, the smell hits me in the stomach, worse than what Alexei smells. Tears came to my eyes and ask if Alexei came here. He said he did, but even he was scared and went to find with us and come back. Locab is looking at me and says that he is not comfortable, but I want him around, because he has the knife and is a very strong man. We enter this bunker and it's so dark and so cold. But it is also completely silent. The smell is getting worse, because we are on our way to the bunker, and in the end I have to take off my shirt and cover the nose and mouth to stop the smell. As I take off my shirt and wrap it around my face, one of my friends pushing me to the ground and I know they run off laughing. I get up and I see them nowhere, but still hear them laughing in the distance. I do not see very good. I, for my part, in the dark and start trying to find a way back. As I was feeling along the wall, I feel, my turn to go through something soft. My eyes focus on the dark and I just vomit everywhere. I just stuck my hand into the eye of the dead. Man. I look at it further to try and work out why he died, and I can see that around the neck, a dent. I am so confused, because I do not see the rope to hang themselves. I understand that this is a bad smell that I smell. I just try and get back and try and decide not to kill my friends, Locab still had the knife. So, I'm just in a bunker, it pitch black and I am calling out to my friends. As I was screaming their names, I hear something. I stop for a moment and it is completely silent and so I ignore it. I walk a few stops, and I hear it again. At this time I was really scared and just start running. I can still hear the noise. I trip and fall over and the noise stops. I'm scared. I get up and hear the shuffling. It is at this point I realize that noise going on at the same time, I am moving. I take another step in the dark, and yes I understand the two, step. One of mine, one of someone else's. I spin around and look behind me, I can not see very far in the distance, but I do not see anyone at all. I take a step back. A moment later my step lands, I hear something else's move on the ground. I was almost crying at this point. Suddenly, I feel a drip on my shoulder, my shirt off and wrapped around my face. I touched it and it is sticky, but it is still wet. I am stunned and just stand there for a minute. The distance, I hear footsteps and I think my friends and turn around and take a step forward. This step is the worst I've ever taken in my life. I felt cold, wet rope tighten around my neck, I walked straight into a noose and felt being cut up in the air. Now I can hear laughter. Open your mouth and try to laugh, that's what it sounded like. I looked up at the roof and see what haunts me to this day. I can see the outline of what looks like a short, bald man. He was naked, and he is the head of a body. But where his legs start is the mass and then four or five small stumpy legs sprouting out. How he had been gripping, on the roof I do not know. 
I understand that it was in his footsteps that have been chasing me. A great big, tongue hangs out of his mouth, and it comes down and wrapped around my neck. I try to pull it off, but the more I pull the more it tightens and yanks me up. I am not sure whether it's laughing loud or I just got closer, but it gets louder and louder. My eyes grow dim and I cannot fight anymore and I start to piss myself as a little girl. All of a sudden, I hear this terrible screaming and I let loose. I heard the footsteps of others before getting stopped up, Locab was making his way back because he only wanted to scare me, and I will drop badly, because I come from him. He brought the knife and cut the monster tongue, and I saw scuttle off screaming and crying across the ceiling. I ran with Locab and leave the bunker. I'm so scared. To this day I do not know what it was and I do not want to go back. I gathered all my things and left the camp and walked back the same day, Locab, and knife. It was 12 years ago. Since then I have never spoken to Alexei again, and Locab hanged himself last June. I'm only writing this story, because my therapist told me that it would be good to write it down and it's off my chest. My friends say that he went back to the cave for a year, but because they are close to the road and it is guarded by the military security forces. I went to try in it recently, but seems to have been blocked off. I can still feel it in my neck at night sometimes slash x slash, so cold. Live in southern part of New Jersey, all sand, and marsh and pine barrens. Some fucked up shit went on here in the past, between smuggling roots in the revolution era to the mafia dumping bodies and the modern pineys i.e. redneck junkies and slash k slash amandos. Friends and I used to go scampering through the woods looking for the Jersey Devil or the den houses of local cults. Around when I was eight there was a huge forest fire, which is unusual here, out in the woods area to the southeast of town. If you ride by now, you can still see the black and thinned out trees. The fire was insane, jumping roads and consuming huge chunks of land. Cops said it was arson, and the responsible party was never caught. Nothing to do here except in a woods or TV watching. Decide to explore the blackened forest when I'm 14. It's in biking distance. Grab water, head down, find a good path in. There's a ton of fresh growth flora, thorn brambles, and fern and whatever else, and the brambles grow thick and can be impenetrable unless you find a deer trail. Make sure a car isn't coming, head off road and into path, walk bike in. Stash bike behind thick growth out of view of road, grab water bottle, head in a woods. All the trees are ashy, try not to touch any of them, bark like charcoal. In the immediate area there aren't houses around, except a few on the absolute periphery of the woods chunk is divided by a few roads, but not much traffic. Place had never been right since the fire. Birds didn't nest there because all the good trees burned up, animals had no prey because no birds and all the insects died and didn't spread back in to fill the gap yet. Entire food chain was fucked up, not much left here except deer passing through on occasion. Find path through the damned brambles. Every outing gets my legs shredded, that's just how it is here. Clouds are patchy, but take note of where sun is, it's around 2 in afternoon, should have plenty of daylight, so I don't get my ass lost. Head out. Still has a thick scent, like going in a house that burned down. You can smell the charred wood. Feels off. I'm used to the birds and squirrel and other little critters making noise. When no cars coming, it's silent. Getting further from road, find a dry creek and head down because clear path from brambles. Sip water bottle, stand around and look. Keep down the creek. See something ahead like a structure. Some kids or crackheads built a stick fort. A three wall barrier to one end, with a log dragged into the middle, char worn off from piney achiks. Half assed bonfire pit with something green wood and an old half burned log couple of beer cans that didn't get too burned. Chill for a few, sweat has dried from the bike ride, pretty nice. Take a sip from bottle, vision is obscured with it in my face. See shape move off to my left periphery. Four feet off the ground, bigger than a squirrel. Lower bottle, look. Can't see anything. Stand up and look around. 
might be a gang or a semi-feral dog. Don't see shit, don't hear shit. Decide to keep moving, head further in. Creek ends, start winding through woods. Notice fresh carvings in a few of the trees, from a knife, just miscellaneous shit like initials and some symbols, swastikas, one had a penis. Litter scattered here and there, surprisingly few. I'm about one fourth through this block chunk. Climb up a little hill, just a few feet, this is flat as pancake Jersey coastal plain. Soil basically sand and ash, slipping, put hand on tree to stabilize myself. Get to top, hand is black from tree. A few beer bottles, some scattered shell casing. Seen casing like that before from the deer hunters, fuckers never clean their mess up. Wind kicking up, feeling it even this deep in a woods. Cloud passes over sun. Look around, thinking whether to go forward or head back. Freeze. There's a goddamned figure down the hill, stock still, staring at me from half behind a bramble wall. It's just far enough that I can't make the features out, but looks like it is wearing winter clothes like a scarf around its neck. It's goddamned summer. Can't see its face, looks like a skinny teenager in bulky clothes. Don't know what he's on. Want to get out of there but don't want to turn my back to him. Think I should grab a stick, look on the ground around me. In the half second that I'm glancing down, it moves. Look up while backpedaling, it's at the top of the end of the hill now. Standing still. My shorts are caught on the bramble, try to pull away and it's stuck. Drop water bottle in the dirt. Fumble at sticker bush, eyes still on the fucker. Hood of its coat up, big ass scarf, cord knit. Clothes are dirty, a bunch of holes and tears, dark brown stains all over. Get sticker out of shorts, fabric comes free. Move a few steps back towards the hole in the brush I came in from, testing whether the guy will jump at me. He's just standing there, watching. Tell him to fuck off, turn half away with my eyes still on him, gonna get back down the hill. Wind is picking up. Snap from behind me. Reflexively turn to look at it. Blur of motion, the fucker in the old coat moves. Closed half the distance to me. Don't know what was behind me, but fuck it, I'm hauling ass out of here. Sprint like a motherfucker, ripping through the bramble, don't give a shit. Can't tell if he's following, I'm making a ton of noise plowing through the brush. Cloudy, no shadows, no light. Wind blowing my hair in my eyes, dust and ash making eyes water. Focus on getting the fuck out of there, running max speed, beyond freaked out. Something jumps out of the brush on my left. Think it's a dog, sidestep to avoid hitting it. It's scrabbling next to me, coming at me. Not a dog. Folded over guy in rags, like old shirt and wife beater that are more whole than fabric. On its hands and feet like a wildman, motions are faster than should be. Lunges for me. Dodge and sprint. Plow through a damned bush, no fucks given, snapping branches off my arms. Other thing is still behind me, I hear them both coming. They're screeching, sounds like a fucked up cat. I have lost all sense of direction, not on the creek, just flat out running for it. Trying not to trip, pushing to go faster because the fuckers are ripping through right behind me. Passing a bunch of mauled trees, like someone went to town on them with a knife for hours hacking the shit out of them. KRE. Heart in throat, might have pissed myself, scratchy scream was right behind me. All ass. Mass up ahead, nowhere else to run. Go past. It's a deer carcass, torn the hell to shreds. Like someone grabbed handfuls of its guts and threw them at the surrounding trees. Stringy intestines hanging off the charred bark, blood splattered up the sides. Panting, inhale deep lungful of the stench. Steaming dead animal reek from the heat. Want to gag and spit. Things are still coming behind me, keep going full tilt. Too fast to be picky about trail, getting fucked up, 
arms up to protect my face and eyes. Can't keep this pace much longer, can't slow down. See edge of forest ahead. Put everything into it. The things are screeching unholy loud in my ear, we're tearing through the woods. Getting whacked in the arms and chest with branches and vines. Almost out, chest burning. Whole mess of brambles strew across the trees like barbed wire. Go right the fuck through, not a shit given, snap the fucking vines with the force. Stumble down a slope to the road, stagger across without looking. Turn around and watch edge of woods. They're screaming and screeching, don't come out. I've lost my momentum, shaking all over, about to fall down. No cars around. This road doesn't even have lines. Isn't the road I came in, must be on other side of woods. Hear the things moving around in the brush, sun blinded and can't see them clearly inside the shade from new green trees. This is the creepiest shit I've ever heard, the sounds they made next, my eyes are watering up remembering it. Louder than anything has a right to be, somewhere between a human and a cat, shrill and grating. Cadence fucked up like an imitation of speech. We are not burned. They're tearing at the woods, snapping branches, and breaking apart the trees. It's one of those long country roads bordered on both sides by woods for miles. There is no way in hell I'm going into the woods on the other side of the road. Start jogging down the road towards home. Hear the things in the woods following me, sound four-legged like they're on hands and feet again occasionally screech at me. In the distance hear another screech the same kind. And another, closer. Run. Go another half mile on pure fear. Don't turn down the road I normally would, keep going straight because a few houses ahead. Sounds residing, still hear them following me but they aren't screaming anymore. No one in their damned yard, still no cars. Going to go into town before heading across to home. Mouth dry, thirsty, and tired, covered in sweat. Slow down when I get to outskirts of town, finally a sidewalk after I cross a road. Can't hear the things, woods are scrappy backyards by now and end at the road crossing. Stop and pant, still shaking. Legs are shredded, blood all seeping down, socks are stained. Arms and body and even cuts on my face. Smeared ash all over. Left arm has a huge gash where I came through the bramble at the end of the woods, bleeding a lot and hurts like a bitch. Walk back to house. Slip in shower before mom sees. Next day, tell them my bike was stolen, well not sure if super s-t-a-l-k-e-r. But close enough. Be me 22. Just got off on college break. Meet up with my friends back home and decide to go hiking. Now let's just say my friends and I are not the smartest people out there. Me and my one friend let's call him Matt are super into stalker, not typing the periods anymore, we both have full stalker gear for hiking and camping that we take with us, mostly because surplus gear is cheaper than Cabela's. Other friends super into Fallout, he has his setup to look like he is a survivor in the wasteland let's call him Sam. Pack up all our shit and go to a national park. We have our rifles and a fair bit of alcohol and baked beans. Remember when I said we were not that smart? Well we decided to pack a canvas army tent into Matt's backpack. The hike was fantastic, great scenery all around us as we walked deeper into the woods. It started to get dark and we decided we needed to make camp. Nearest site is like 5 miles to our north and like hell we are going to make that before nightfall. Clear underbrush and prepare to set up tent. Realize we forgot that the tent needed three wooden poles to stand so we have to make some boy scout knots to lash together a few sticks. I start fire outside our tent and we eat our beans and res when drinking. Let's just say when I get drunk I get paranoid. Like really paranoid. Sam decides to start reading skinwalker stories. He is doing it just to mess with me but that knowledge doesn't matter. Midway through the story we hear a screech through the dark trees. It was probably a fox or owl but for my impaired mind it was the skinwalkers. They were coming for me. My friends were also kinda spooked as well. 
I was not going to die without a fight though. Remember my days on slash k slash reading about simple but effective traps laid by the Viet Cong. Lightbulb.gif I took out my shovel and started digging punji pits all around our tent. Matt starts making an alarm system out of beer and empty bean cans around our perimeter. Sam decides more light is better than less light. How do you get more light? More fire. Did I mention Sam was a bit of a pyro? He collects a shitton of WOD and makes a fire circle around the tent. The final touch was to wipe the spikes I had previously made with our own shit. Finally our defenses were finished. We were ready for the attack. Stinks of shit and the smoke is pretty bad so we all put on our gas masks. No stalker forgets his gas mask. Decide to drink more Soviet liquid courage. Matt starts yelling perimeter breach. Perimeter breach. At the top of his lungs and starts firing into the forest randomly. Not sure if there actually was a breach but I wasn't taking chances, start mag dumping into the darkness. Forest sounds like the Alamo. Blind myself because I'm an idiot. Run out of ammo eventually. Only one mag left, need to make it count. I fell asleep at some point due to fatigue and alcohol. When I woke up I finally could appreciate the marvel that we had created. The ranger that woke me seemed less impressed. Stage 4 autism takes over and I say privet stalker. Realize I still have my gas mask on and probably look like a complete weirdo. I get arrested and charged with a misdemeanor and fined $400 for firing a weapon in a national park and am forced to fill in my skinwalker defenses. Basically my nope is that I think there is something living. Walking around in my, ex, best friend's skin. We'll tell the tale and the nopes that led up to it. July last year. Me and friend both 18. Decide to go camping for a week. End up not liking any of the lame, paid, campsites. We are doing this the old way goddammit. Illegally camp in this amazing area surrounded by paddocks and woods and etc. Far away from houses, properties. Nearest town at least half hour drive away. Fuck snakes and spiders we are Australian. First few days of camping are great, though it was pretty rainy. Every night we end up talking for hours and being hilarious. Then go to sleep in a massive swag I brought. The place is great, but for some reason we stick together. It made me uneasy to be alone, and for some reason we always made sure we were within viewing distance of one another. One night we ended up huddled in fear. Can hear something walking around dot the fucking swag. Walks around us for hours while we both nope dot jpg the fuck out. Hear fucked up screech from a distance. Noise like wind going past really fast and footsteps stop. We're camped in a clearing no wind can get through the trees like that, hasn't this whole time. My friend laughs. Ha 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 holy fuck anon. That was scary as fuck. End up eventually going to sleep, but wake up at noon. Next day. I'm cooking. Oh shit we need more firewood. Can't leave this food because it'll burn really fast. My friend volunteers. Duh. First time one of us has gone into the wooded area alone. Friend pauses before going in. Finally summons some fucking courage and disappears from sight. I'm a fucking master chef. Not wearing my watch but it's been like an hour. I'm nearly done cooking this stuff. Assume they're taking a shit. I'll give that fucker some privacy. Fire begins to fail so I have to ninja get some wood and finish the meal. Eventually I realize maybe inbred fuckers have raped and eaten my friend. Damn it I spent ages cooking this meal. I'm willing to revenge at the risk of being raped and eaten myself. Grab big ass knife, rifle, torch, and a bite of my delicious damper. Walk into woods yelling for friend. 
feel something watching me. Beginning to get scared, but not about to admit that. Come out you fucker it doesn't take that long to shit. See someone in woods in front of me. Hear my mate laugh. Hear screech behind me. Oh fuck nope. JPEG. Sprint that shit straight towards where I saw my friend. That fucker is unarmed. Be running, lose sight of friend. Call out to him. Motherfucker if you're dead I will kill you. End up breaking through wooded area into a paddock. Ah shit. JPEG. See something move in woods across the paddock. Looks big. Bigger than me. Considers how many bullets I have. Probably not enough. Ha ha nope. Run back through woods. Get through to campsite. My friend is sitting there wearing a change of clothes. Ha 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 holy fuck anon. That was scary as fuck. See nothing wrong with it. Ha ha stupid faggot what did you do? Cover yourself in shit. He laughs. Oh wait. Did I you hear the screech? Shakes his head. I must be paranoid. We dig into some delicious food. Tell him about the huge thing I saw. He just laughs again. I wouldn't worry about it. That night. Sitting across from friend in front of fire. I've decided to teach myself whittling. Whittling away. Cut my thumb. Friend looks at thumb. I stick a band-aid on that shit and continue to whittle. He's reading a book and has a little lantern with him. I know what a faggot thing to do. Woods rustling and shit. Crickets chirpy chirping away. Friend laughs at something he's read. I think about his laugh in the woods. Realize it's the exact same laugh as the one when the thing walked around the swag. Same laugh he did just then, same as the first thing he said when I found him with different clothes on back at camp. He said the same words to him. Weird. Eventually decide to drink a bit. He's a lightweight. We both crawl into the swag giggling. I have the knife attached to my belt. I wake up once and find him staring at me. Drunk brain suddenly worried he might be going homo for a second while drunk. Talk about this girl I really like. He seems to be really aware and listening to everything I say. Suddenly feels like my bladder is gonna burst. I stagger out to this little river that goes past our campsite. Take a piss in the early morning light while in awe of the majesty of nature. See something grey sticking out of the riverbed. Pull it out. It's my friend's shirt he wore yesterday before going into woods. It's torn up pretty bad. Little bit of blood on it. Too drunk to really put anything together. Lovingly rebury it because my drunk brain thinks putting the cotton back to nature to decompose is a great idea. Clean hands on pants. Climb back into swag. Friend is fucking gone to the world. I pass out and wake up a couple of hours later. Friend still asleep. Dirty hands but then we both have dirty hands and stuff. Begin to nope about weird shit that's happening. Fire needs restarting. While pushing the coals and ashes around to add wood properly I find a button off the pants he wore yesterday and a bit of grey cotton fabric like the stuff from his shirt. What the fuck? Today is the day we pack up and leave. When friend wakes up he's being as weird as he was yesterday. I'm packing. He gives me a weird look. I tell him to help. He asks if I can go get some firewood, because he's hungry. I tell the bitch once we've done packing I'll hold his hand and go into the woods with him. Once we've packed up we both carry shit up to the car which is hidden up near the bush track to get out of here. I've checked my car every day. He follows the whole way because the dumb fuck has probably forgotten where it is. 
We load up the car. I turn it on to make sure it's all good. I'm able to tune radio. Pretty status C, but there's a weather warning about storms hitting the area. We go back to campsite to grab the last shit. Can we go get firewood? Now. Friend is standing just inside edge of woods. Suddenly get this feeling deep in my stomach, like instinctual fear or something. Really want to get the fuck out of there. Nah man, weather warning. Eat some food we've got left over and we'll buy something hot when we hit the next town. It's an eight hour drive home. While I finish picking up rubbish he doesn't even eat anything but the fucker has been acting weird. Ask him if he's alright. Yeah, anon. I'm fine. Are you sure we can't stay another night? I don't think the storm will hit here. See something move in woods behind him. What the fuck is that? He doesn't turn around. I pull out my knife and for some reason he goes almost into a defensive pose, gives me weird look. Dude there was something behind you. He turns around then. I'm sure it was nothing. Anon. While we walk up to car, he looks behind us a few times. I'm trying to act normal because he isn't. So, ah, when I was cleaning up the fire I noticed bits of your clothes in there. He says he wrecked them while collecting firewood and didn't want to add to the rubbish to bring back. Fucking weirdo dude you've never done shit like that before. He shrugs and looks around as we get up to the car. Feel like something is watching me. Once we're in the car and back out on the road I feel better. I keep trying to make conversation, but he doesn't put much into the conversation. I turn on the radio. Every so often he repeats things some of the radio presenters say. While we aren't talking I have time to think about it. Him not being worried about shit that worries me. Think about the weird looks he's been giving me in different situations. Feel sick and horrified and I realize the faces are probably the faces I was pulling at him at those moments. He's been mimicking my expressions. Realize he's been repeating phrases I say and his laugh never changes. His clothes all torn up and burying them. Finding them burnt after I found them. Wanting me to go back into the creepy fucking woods for some reason. I know for a fact he isn't gay or some shit. He has a girl he likes and it's adorable how chill he tries to be about it. Decide to give a little test. Talk about some stupid shit we did as kids. Ask him questions he just says. Oh I don't remember that part. Or agrees with me. The more I think about it I realize he hasn't been acting like himself at all since he went missing while I cooked. When we get to a town I turn my phone on and call my mum. She's glad we had fun and stuff. Can't wait for us to get back in town and spend some time with her before I go back to work. FIFO 4LYF. Ask him if he's gonna call his parents. Weird look again, then he gets his phone from his backpack. Will can't. Nearly done. I buy grab money from our joint cash fund and buy us both lunch. He eats the almost raw steak from his burger, but doesn't want his chips or the rest of the bun or salad. He goes in. Comes out with two more huge pieces of red steak, done rare. Wolfs those fuckers down while I finish my meal. Pulls out his phone again and fires off some texts. Notice some wicked bruises covering his upper arms. What the fuck happened there, man? He shrugs, says the don't hurt. Well okay then. I change clothes and shower there. He is waiting by the car. Notice him staring and watching other people. Says he doesn't want a shower. I call him a smelly fucker and so he disappears for a bit.
comes back with new clothes and has had a shower thank Christ we both smelled like wildlings. Keep on driving. Now night time. Only an hour or two out away from home. He slowly begins to join in conversation, but he doesn't sound the same as he used to. None of his speech habits like making puns. That sick fuck. No talking about the girl he's crazy about. Decide to bring up the creepy shit that happened out at the campsite. I swear I thought about shooting at that horse or whatever that big thing was, but then I decided I liked my chances of not knowing. He laughs. I wouldn't worry about that. Anon. I begin to feel uneasy and think that maybe this isn't my friend sitting beside me anymore. What about that thing that walked around our tent? Exclamation mark. He gives me this weird smile. Maybe it was a werewolf. Anon. I laugh. Or a hot chick who was lost. He grins wider. Or maybe something that was just checking us out. Feel weird again. I force a laugh. Why would anything do that? Like some cannibal or rapist. He looks out the window. I can't watch him cause I gotta keep my eyes on the road. Maybe they wanted to get out of there as badly as you did this morning. Anon. What the fuck did he just say? JPEG. Glance at him. Not looking at me. Can feel my knife still on my hip in its holster. The rifle stored safely away in the back. Ha ha. Like a skinwalker or some shit. Trying not to drive this fucking car off the side of the road. Something like that. We both go silent. He laughs. Same. Fucking. Laugh. But that would be impossible, right? Anon. Laugh. Yeah. Yeah it would be. Radio goes on and we don't talk for the rest of it. Get to his house, help him get his shit out of my car and then I drive home. Get inside. Shaking. I am a man, for fuck's sake. Keep it together motherfucker. Seriously think my friend died out there and there is something else living inside him now. Weird shit has happened like his dog and cat have, mysteriously, disappeared. He doesn't hang out with us as much and even the girl he liked tried to hang out with him and she says he was, really fucking weird. He apparently acts almost robotic ally and only eats hardly cooked meat like a fucking caveman. His mum even asked if he'd gotten into any fights because his skin is always bruised. Now, he could have joined a fight club or has become the clumsiest motherfucker ever. But honestly my best friend is a totally different guy. He recently invited me to go camping again to the same spot. I had to say I was busy, but I'm terrified that maybe there was more than one and when he tried to get me to go out into the woods with him he was trying to lure me out there for the same thing to happen to me. Shit's so fucked I ignore his calls now and whenever I get back from a swing at work all I get is complaints about his weird behavior and people asking if he's on drugs or some shit. For God's sake I've told my friends to never take him up on camping and I told the girl I liked now my girlfriend. All this weird shit that happened and she agrees that he is a totally different person. He was a stand-up guy who was hilarious and laid back and now he is almost malicious and uncaring and sometimes I can hear that fucking laugh in my head and that fucking screech and it sucks being terrified of some asshole I used to love like a brother. And so concludes the fucked up tale of me being convinced that my friend is no longer human, who he used to be. I have never in my life seen anyone change like that. Just, some days I fucking nope the whole thing and hope that I'm just crazy and he's just gone on some sort of hardcore drugs. Should have asked him things that only he would know. Lie about something, make him agree with you, 
and there you go. A better way to tell. Or, just come clean with everything, and see if he admits it in arrogance. That's pretty much what I did, and that's what set it off for me. Stupid shit we did as kids was like putting this purple goo into these girls' hair. He loves to tell that story because in order to get rid of the blame on us we put it in our own hair so we wouldn't get in trouble and they wouldn't tell. We got in trouble anyway. While we were driving I asked him if he remembered putting goo into girls' hair. He said yes. I asked him if he remembered if it was green or blue of purple or something. And he said he didn't remember but was pretty sure it was green. Now, there is no fucking way he forgot. No fucking way. He fucking told that story a couple of weeks before we went down there. I also asked him shit about his first dog, Mo. He didn't remember shit about Mo. In fact it made me so fucking sick of his vague fucking responses that I stopped before he realized I was getting upset. And God knows what would have happened if IT realized what I was doing. But I assume it can read. And it learns. Very fast. Like his phone. When I told him to call him parents, he treated his phone like he had no fucking idea. But then by the time I bought food he was already texting people. And then he's mimicking my expressions and other people's and the radio's talking. It was fucking too spooky for me man. Maybe it makes me an asshole for being willing to drop a friendship that I've had pretty much my whole life over these experiences, but honestly what am I supposed to do? Hello officers, when I was on a camping trip with my best mate last year and we spent a good amount of the time drinking and camping on illegal ground which will get me fined if not imprisoned, I'm pretty sure something ate my friend's insides and is now wearing him as a meat suit. Could you please contact the proper authorities and have this entire town and said campsite nuked? Ha! From what I know, he hasn't attacked anyone physically or asked anyone else to go camping with him. I made an appointment with a psychiatrist tomorrow, because I honestly think I've lost it. This is my story, it's quite long so bear with me. Just recently become 20 years old. Want to do something fun for birthday. Invite three friends to go URBX and hunt hunting with me in the CZ. Republic. Two destinations are abandoned underground facilities from the Second World War. One destination is a supposedly haunted hill. Another destination is a long tunnel, just beneath the ground which supposedly abruptly ends, still don't know where that one's supposed to be. You're catching my drift, I think, we had a lot planned. Group consists of me, a hipster, a comic, nerd and a rich guy. Be yesterday evening. Hang out in the house of rich guy, check. Smoke some weed and watch Ace Ventura. Decide to take a look at local forest while stoned. Meet some random dude in front of the forest, his English is pretty decent. I'd say even better than mine. He's pretty young, says he's there quite often. Says he used to do videos there. We don't really know him, but he seems like an alright person, Plus we might need someone who knows the area, so we ask him to chill with us in the forest. He takes a long look into the forest. Listen, I am not letting you enter that forest. We are confused, asking him whether he's the forest keeper or something. He completely avoids eye contact with us, staring into the forest. Nerd starts grinning and shouts creepy pasta time. With a melodic voice. Some of us laugh. Forest dude is visibly annoyed, he mocks our laughter and tells us to fuck off. Rich Anon is getting upset, hipster Anon too. Forest dude's eyes are trailing something in the forest in short bursts of movement. Without looking away from the forest, he says. Creepy pasta. Okay, okay, okay. So you are like into creepy stuff right? I was too, 
I was too. He licks his lips and cowers a little as if he was trying to look beneath something. Nerdunan is now joking about me having planned all of this. Forest bro is fucking pissed, his entire body language is saying I'm prepared to fight you. Fists clenched and feet wide apart he finally turns towards us. Two options, you leave, or I make you leave. We mock Forest dude a little, but we turn around. Suddenly Rich Anon turns towards the forest again and starts sprinting inside. Instinctively we follow him. Because we are a bunch of retards, we make bird noises while running past Forest Dude who desperately tries to catch one of us. Forest Dude stops chasing right after the first tree. He's crying now, hysterical, begging us not to go inside. He's offering us money, his car, and some inaudible things, at this point we really think he's gone nuts. After about 20 minutes of walking, Hipster Anon sits down on a large rock. We sit around him, starting to roll new joints. Talking about a restaurant where you can get an entire menu for like 8 euros and it's fucking delicious. Nerd Anon stares at his half roll joint. Dudes, I'm out, not smoking anymore. Total paranoia. He passes his weed on but we don't really bother asking him what's wrong since he always was kinda weird. We toke up and continue north. Sorry for breaking the story. I should have fucking listened to that forest dude. We find a half rotten, half gnawed boar carcass. Nerd Anon is freaking out, begging us to leave, claims he knows his shit, claims there is no animal in these forests able to kill a boar. Getting a bad feeling as well, suggest we head back. Hipster Anon says we should look for mushrooms on the way out, the normal ones. We spread out a little and look for mushrooms. Surprisingly there are none. I get a little bit distracted by a weird stump and get separate off of the group. As we get back together, it seems that Nerd Anon cheered up a bit, at least he's not frightened anymore. We make our way back. Rick Guy laughs loudly as he sees that Forest Dude is still in front of the forest. Forest Dude is anxiously walking up and down, no trace of him being angry at us, just frightened or worried or something. We decide to apologize to him and offer him a beer. As we walk out of the forest, he's relieved at first. Until he sees Nerd Anon. His eyes widen and you could see how his breath stopped for a moment as he turned pale. He suddenly smiles and accepts our offer. On the way, we're talking about nothing in particular. Forest Dude comes to Nerd Anon and asks him, how long Rich Anon has lived up there nodding towards Rich Anon's house. Nerd Anon says he doesn't know. We all remember the fucked up night we had as we had a goodbye, Rich Anon party in his house, since he was leaving our country to live back in the Czech Republic. Think that Nerd Anon probably smoked too much so he doesn't remember it? Forest Dude cautiously looks at each one of us, as if he's expecting some sort of reaction. Fast forward a few minutes. We're in a hospada, a bar slash restaurant, now. Locals make comments about Forest Dude which I don't understand, he's annoyed by them. We start drinking beer and medixa, only Nerd Anon is drinking water. Forest Dude suggests we play a round of darts. All but Nerd Anon agree, he wants to read something, plus he's not feeling too well. We start playing darts, Forest Dude sucks and talk feels extremely forced. He suddenly tells us, that he's getting a new round of beer. After he's taking too long, I decide to follow him. He's standing at the bar, occasionally peeping towards Nerd Anon. Confront him, but he just puts his arm around me and draws me in close, while raising his finger to his lips, signaling me to be quiet. I give him the benefit of the doubt. I will say what I have to say, please listen carefully. After that, do with me what you want. I gave your friend gold dust. My father is a goldsmith. Watch your friend. I try to inconspicuously peep over to Nerd Anon. The skin on his neck is bumpy, as if there was something beneath it, from the looks of it wrinkled skin or maybe feathers. I look back at Forest Dude and he just nods at me as if he was trying to say told you so. 
I'm fed up with all of this, so I ask the bartender for a pack of smokes and ask Forrest Dude if he wants to smoke one with me outside catch some fresh air. Forrest Dude understands this is a cover for me to talk to him alone and loudly accepts the offer. Outside, it's night already. Don't expect answers, I don't have any. Starts Forrest Dude. Before I can say anything he continues. I have no idea where it came from, how many there are, or whether it is my fault or not. They are allergic to gold dust, that's all I can say for sure. I laugh a bit, dizzy from booze and weed and ask, whether he's trying to pull an X prank on me. He starts rambling about some rituals he did in the woods and that he started noticing weird things in his videos and I don't really remember what else, he was confused and very upset. There's no commotion. He said, we should get inside, see what's going on. We walk in, but only Hipster Anon is sitting at the table Nerd Anon and Rich Anon nowhere to be seen. We casually ask where they are. Hipster Anon says that Nerd Anon wasn't feeling well, so he went out in the back. We keep on drinking, and I'm really drunk at this point. Rich Anon and Nerd Anon walk in, Nerd Anon is exchanging mean looks with Forrest Dude. The rest of the evening is a foggy mess and not really noteworthy, Forrest Dude left us after a while and we stumbled home. I wake up a little earlier than usual due to having to take a massive piss. Walk downstairs. Notice Rich Anon taking off his soaking wet hoodie and Nerd Anon putting away two pairs of shoes covered in mud. Ask them where they were. They say, they were just taking a walk. Be suspicious about them and try to do what Forrest Dude did earlier. What a shame we agreed not to visit the underground facilities, I'd love to see them. They both say they don't want to. Starting to get really uncomfortable. Lock the door to my room and sleep until noon. Someone knocks at my door. It's Rich Anon. Says they all want to check out the forest again. Still confused and tired I follow him out of the house. All three of my friends and even Forrest Dude are standing there, all of them in a cheerful mood. They start talking about the neat stone on which one of them sat the day before, and how much fun it'll be. Forrest Dude smiles. Let's go he says. I thought you didn't want anyone to walk into the forest. He laughs and says that he had a bad day, we should totally take a walk in the forest today. I suggest we have a small breakfast first. Rush up to Rich Anon's room and take two gold rings into his father's workshop. Manage to get some gold dust. At this point I'm too scared and confused to think rationally. All of them are just drinking water, while I'm having boiled eggs. I ask them if they want some of the ham we bought yesterday. They all agree. I sprinkle the gold dust on it as I'm putting it on a dish. They start devouring it like crazy, giving me an occasional, seductive glance. Their skin is bumpy. Their teeth are sharp. As they continue munching on the ham, I notice small parts of their fingers sticking to the table and to whatever else they touch. They notice that I was staring at them and exchange meaningful looks. I think we should get going. Anonymous. Says Nerd Anon. I tell them I'm feeling sick and they should leave without me. Without hesitation they do so. Walk up to my room. Lock the door. Call a psychiatrist friend. Get on slash x slash. Start thread. Well, first off I'm not Czech, I'm actually from Germany. And second, I have no idea about local folklore, but gold dust doesn't ring any bells. Rushed into workshop with two rings and started filing or rasping, don't know the proper word for it, them until I had a little bit of it. Quite a bit of the gold stuck in the rasp. Up here. If anyone knows Forrest Dude, I'd love a link. I can describe him, if it helps. Short dark brown hairs in a slight side cut, medium length brown coat, sweater, fingerless gloves, black pants, black leather shoes. He was kinda thin, especially in his face, oh also he had a slightly deformed nose, like if it was broken and not properly fixed once. Dude, the situation was surreal as fuck. 
I wasn't even properly able to process the fact that he presumably put something into a friend's drink. Up here, holy fucking cowdies. That's Forrest dude. Please tell me this is an elaborate hoax to troll me or something. Verfect Nakmal Jungs, here have Michik ear whisked, Aber ear content den skies ouch ruig sen lassen. What is more rational? A psychosis from smoking too much weed on a regular basis. Or skinwalkers or shapeshifters or whatever. Up here. Nursko in the southwest of the Czech Rep. The forest is called Jevinek. I never trusted him in the first place. I hope so fucking much you are right and I am just being trolled. Up here. It's so fucking weird to see Forest Dude talk about adventure time, absolutely surreal. Yes, that's the forest, we ventured in, well, perhaps 300-500m, it's hard to tell when you're inside. To clarity, we were all staying at Rich Anand's place as we know him from school in Germany. After school we went different ways, but we still occasionally hang out. His parents are currently in Spain I believe. Right now, I am in one of the five rooms in the first story of his parents' house, due to him being rich as fuck, we all got separate rooms. Also, it's late as fuck and they still aren't back. Well, actually I'm kind of glad they aren't back. Sorry man, it's late here Nad I miss Reed. We're staying at Rich Anand's place, his parents are currently gone, I don't know anything about Forrest Dude's family, besides that he claimed his father is a goldsmith. My head is kind of fuzzy. Up here. Listen, I don't really trust my memory anymore. But that stump he's filming, and after a glowing light his camera dies. That's the stump I was distracted by while searching for mushrooms. A big, torn apart stump on a small clearing, looking like the stump plus roots of a large tree after being torn out of the ground. I am noping so hard right now. Fuck everything I hope I'm insane. Up here. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. I am very tired. They haven't returned yet from whatever they were doing. I managed to get a hold of someone uninvolved who offered me to stay for a few days at his place. I hope he gets here before my friends do. If what I saw was real and I hope it wasn't, the gold dust lets there, like, true form shine out. They don't seem too nice, but you can see what's beneath the skin. Also, the higher the dosage, the more you can see. I think. God fucking damn it this sounds so retarded. If they are playing a prank on my. I have to fucking murder them in their sleep. Up here. Ich bin relativ kurz nach meiner letzten Nachricht mit einem Freund Lashgefahren. Ich hab nicht wirklich vor sie sagen wo ich gerät bin, mach mich erst mal ein wenig bedeckt halten. I'm really, really tired by no. The fucked up thing is, none of my friends tried to call me. Let's assume for a moment, that this was a paranormal incident, how fucked am I? Up here last post for today. Entered forced after following street out of Chudenin. Walked for about 15 minutes. We'll get a few friends and look for my old group. We'll post whatever we find out, as soon as possible. Everything is alright, it was all in my mind. I was the one. I am going now. Going to return with my friends. I'm not quite sure what happened that day. My memory is hazy. But everything is quite all right now, I am where I belong. Good night. I just got back from a camping trip on my family's land out in western Kentucky. And I will probably never go back after something stalked us for two nights and ultimately made us tear through the dense woods in a panic that cannot be understood until you have been hunted by something that you know is far beyond your comprehension. Something that ancient medicine men and old wives whisper about, throwing glances over aged shoulders to peer into the darkness while leaning forward into the protection of the light of the fire. There were six of us out this weekend. Myself, and my wife, our super tactical friend Matt, our heavyweight tank of of a man friend Sam, my not really a fan of the outdoors friend Jeremy, and his outdoor loving girlfriend Chelsea. For some background, Matt and I are gun nuts, 
So we were both carrying pistols, even though there isn't really anything in the woods of Kentucky that we need them for. I also had my AR-15 and Matt brought his 10-20 seconds. We arrived at the property at 8 p.m., just as it became pitch black, so we had to make camp in the dark. Not a big deal, just throw on a headlamp and get to setting up camp, starting with the fire. The campsite was a cleared out area, with some trees on the edges, then it gets into the denser woods. Since we were had our hammocks, my wife and I had to set up farther away from the fire, which was in the center of the clearing. It was unnerving to see the shadows of our friends, cast by the roaring fire, dance against the trees while we set up our hammocks. We set them up quickly, but due to the general creepiness of the situation, I didn't notice my wife occasionally pausing to look back into the woods and watching for the movement that she later told me she caught out of the coma of her eye. After setting up camp, I realized that I had left my jacket back in my car, and Matt wanted to go check out a pond, so we decided we would head out together and hit both the cars and the pond. I grabbed my AR and Matt grabbed his 10-20 seconds to go play mall ninja in the woods on the way. We handed Sam a radio and made sure we were on the same frequency and headed out. Started out very tactical, but after we got a good distance into the woods, the cars and pond were both in a clearing through about 300 yards of woods, we both were getting a little nervous. I don't think we realized just how dark it was out there. We stopped bounding and covering each other from imagined Chinese paratroopers, and started walking together, rifles down, making as little noise as possible. At first we didn't really know why, but then we stopped and listened. Nothing, absolutely no sounds, no wind, no bugs, nothing. We looked at each other and even though we couldn't see each other's eyes, we knew what we were thinking. All the Deminowoods threads on Slash K Slash had prepared us for this moment. We knew what we had to do. I acted first, putting a palm on the back of Matt's neck, and shoved him firmly, simply being able to articulate the word go under my breath. He pushed through the growth headlong and I did my best to keep my hand on his back and ignore the thought in the back of my mind, slowly pushing its way forward and filling my chest with terror and rising into my throat. We broke out of the woods into the clearing and made it to the cars breathing heavily. We both put our backs against my SUV and pointed our rifles into the woods, expecting something to burst after us. After 20 seconds, Matt expressed my thoughts. Something was running behind us, right? I stopped breathing when he said it, because before I had attributed it to my imagination, but a third party now confirmed that something was chasing us, and was now between us and the camp. I called Sam on the radio. Asterisk Sam, did anyone else leave camp to follow us? Nope, we are all here still. Shit. I opened the car and reached in to grab my jacket and also got a flashlight while Matt continued staring at the woods, looking for the slightest sign of movement. I tummed back around and tummed the light on the woods. Nothing, blessed nothingness. But now we had to get back into the woods to get to camp. After five minutes to discussing it, we decided that it had just been our imagination, if only just to get the courage to re-enter those haunted woods. Flashlight in hand, I gripped my rifle and slogged in, Matt's hand firmly encouraging me firmly, with him watching behind us. The walk back was uneventful but at the sight of the fire we hurried our pace even faster before re-entering the safety of the clearing. After we broke out of the woods, we broke formation and quietly agreed under our breath not to mention anything to the group. Silence, unfortunately, seemed to fail. As we were both uncharacteristically quiet, not to mention that we had not had time to see the pond, and the group was curious about our radio call. So I told them what had happened. Three chuckled and made fun of 4chan for making up ghost stories, but Chelsea listened intently. Later on she asked if any of us had read the books, Missing 411, or the Native American studies of Dr. George Marlin in his book, Rights of the American Indian. None of us had, but she told us that Missing 411 documented many strange and unexplained disappearances in America, and ROAI is an old, out of circulation book she found at the library when she was a kid that confirmed many things that slash k slash and slash x slash said of the occult in the wilderness. More or less. Everyone quieted down at that, and stared into the fire. I remembered reading on slash k slash that white ash kills skinwalkers, and since I was a paranoid motherfucker, I thought it might be worth it to dip my hollow points into the white ashes in the fire. Chelsea told me not to bother. 
It needs to be the ashes of white oak trees per Dr. Marlin. Well damn. My wife spoke up after a few minutes of silence and told us about how she thought she had seen something moving in the woods when we were setting up our hammock. At this point, we were all pretty on edge. Every once in a while we would shine lights into the forest, but never actually saw anything. Around midnight, we decided to call it a night. As I lay there in the hammock, I couldn't help but listen to the rustling around our hammock and gripping my MNP tighter and wondering if that sound is really just the wind. The next day was relatively uneventful and in the midst of the sun and clouds and changing leaves the horror of the previous night was forgotten. We went and shot guns, chopped down a tree to make seats for the campfire, and just enjoyed the cool fall air. However, instead of shooting all the ammo I brought for the trip, I decided to keep one full mag for my AR and my MNP. Dusk fell and we sat around the fire to cook our hot dogs. Emboldened by the sunlight and full bellies, we taunted the spreading darkness and challenged the spirit of the Wendigo, which unnerved Chelsea, and made me instantly regret my decision. Matt, however, was emboldened, and walked around camp with his rifle slung talking about how he hoped to get to be the first slash K slash Amando to slay a skinwalker. As the sun finally set, we built up the fire, double checked our wood supply, and settled in for what we hoped would be a relaxing evening. About an hour after the sunset we had finished making s'mores, when the echoing howls of coyotes started. We were unconcerned, since we know that it is extremely rare for coyotes to attack people, but then the cows in a field in the opposite direction started bellowing as the wind picked up a bit. Blowing piles of fallen leaves across camp and bringing into our nostrils the scent of decaying lichen and a touch of rotted meat. Jeremy nervously suggested that perhaps the coyotes had found a kill. Matt, filled with newfound confidence, wanted to go looking for them. I didn't want to go, I really didn't want to go, but I am way too loyal for that shit, so I followed him into the godforsaken woods to look for the coyotes. We moved, slowly and carefully in the direction that we had last heard the coyotes. A mixture of stealth to find the animals, and fear of the unknown. After cruising for about 50 yards, I heard Matt stumble, swear, and fall to the ground, clattering over his plate carrier. I shined my light towards him and as I looked at what he had stumbled on, the stench or rotting meat and like a dry sewage smell wafted into my nose so that I was doubled over, ready to puke. With hands on my knees and my rifle hanging from its one-point sling, I looked up and saw that my friend had stumbled over a huge deer carcass. He was sitting on his ass just staring at the carcass wide-eyed. I immediately looked up and shouldered my rifle, looking for the coyotes, but they didn't seem to be around. I went over to help Matt up, but when I got over to him he was still staring wide-eyed at the corpse. My view of the body had been from behind, so I didn't see much, just a large deer, but from this side, I could see the horror of the animal. The animal looked both decayed, and mutated. The hind legs were huge and muscular, strangely elongated, the chest and body were horribly mutilated, the intestines hanging out like its stomach had been pulled out. The head was the most decayed, I could see the skull in parts and the eyelids had been torn off, the twelve pointed antlers had moss growing all over them. But the worst part was the four legs. They were long, and slender, and ended in clawed hands. I stared at the creature for a good five seconds before I felt the same crushing presence that I had felt the night before, and as I looked around to identify the source, I realized that the entire forest was silent. I have never felt fear like I did in that moment, and thankfully, fight or flight screamed at me to fly. I grabbed Matt by the back of his plate carrier and pulled him to his feet and pushed him back towards camp, screaming at him to run. I looked back then, scanning around with my light when it settled on the corpse, it was moving. I reacted purely out of fear firing several rounds from my AR. I couldn't hear anything after that due to the deafening thunder from the rifle. I dropped my flashlight in the chaos, but the light from my muzzle showed me all I needed to see to grab my friends back at camp and rush them back to the cars. The first I remember, imprinted like a photograph in my mind, is the corpse laying on its stomach, unlike on its side when we had found it. The second, is the body resting on its forearms the head rolling limply from the shoulders. And finally, the creature standing on its hind legs, using its clawed hands to stuff its innards back into its belly. The horrible eyes staring at me with a supernatural fire, burning with hunger. I was in tears from fear when we made it to the camp, I have no idea if any of my rounds connected.
I don't know what I said or what was said by the rest of my friends when we made it into camp, but I got them out of camp and into the cars. We just drove and drove until we got to a nearby gas station which was still open. I grabbed a monster and drank it and tried to process what I had seen. There is only one thing it could have been. A true Wendigo.